production using our software. If you're interested in skipping ahead, uh, I plan to go through the following. So we're going to go through the LM function, which is the function in R that does regressions. And then um, near the end, we'll do kind of add two complicating things. We'll add an interaction effect and add a quadratic variable to the regression. Um, also, if you need help downloading and installing our software, you know, R is just a free popular statistics software. Um, or if you need help loading data or you want more econometrics resources, I'll be sure to drop in uh, in the video description links to those things as well. Um, I'll also be sure to post the R code to the video description as well. So let's move over to R. Um, let's get it up and loaded. The first thing I like to do is um, start up a new script window. So I'm going to do my code inside here, and then we'll see the effect of that code as we run it in uh, the con R console. Um, one second. Great. First, we need uh, let's load the data uh, and have a look at the data. So once again, um, the data and the R code for this video are going to appear in the video description. Um, so let's run it. Uh, notice that uh, throughout the video, I'm going to be clicking this button right here, um, which appears like two planes and, and a little arrow key. It means run the code that's on this line. So by clicking this, I've run that code uh, and loaded uh, this data into an object called wage data. So here I've assigned the object wage data to this uh, data file. So first, what we want to do is just kind of have a quick look at what the data looks like. Um, so we're going to use this function str. Uh, and it tells us that uh, in this uh, data file, the CSV file, there's 335 observations with four variables. Our four variables are wages, education, experience, and age. Um, it tells you that uh, you know these are all integers um, for these four variables, and it kind of gives you the first few readings. So you know, wage here is uh, 5149, uh, 4950, so on, going down uh, all the way to the 534 observations. Uh, summary is also pretty useful. So here for wage, education, experience, and age, it gives you some basic information. So like the average or the mean wage here is 9,000. So I'm not sure if that's, it can't be annual and it can't be monthly. So I'm not sure what wage data. I think this is actually from real data, but anyway, uh, education on average is 13 years. So that's uh, slightly less than um, high school or slightly more than high school. Uh, average experience here is, is 17 years and average age here is 36. So the model I want to run the aggression on is going to be the following. So we're going to have wage as our um, dependent variable. Um, our is a function of these other explanatory variables. So how do we convert this model um, into a command that R could then work with and then run the regression on? So we're going to use the lm function um, just to kind of give you a sense of what lm is. Um, you could do question mark and then the function you want to learn about. Um, by running this code, it's going to open up a little web page and it gives us uh, some information about the LM um, function. So we're going to be using the LM function and LM stands here for linear model and it's a function that does the OLS regression within R. So how do we use the LM function? Um, first, we're going to need to convert our model into a language that R can deal with. Uh, so wage here is our dependent variable or response variable. Um, that is what we're going to start off with. So for example, if we wanted to do a log level regression, we do something like this. Rather than wage, we do log wage. Um, since we're going to do a level level regression, we just have wage standing in there. Uh, next, we have a little tilde that separates the um, independent variable, the dependent variable from the independent variables of the model. And since the model has education plus experience and age as explanatory variables, uh, we'll type those in to the, the rest of this section here. Um, note also that our model here has an intercept value, um, that beta naught there. Um, the, the LM function by default automatically includes an intercept. Um, in a second that you're going to see that. So when I do this code, you'll notice I don't have any kind of stand in for the intercept at all. Um, if you didn't want, if you wanted your code to specifically exclude the intercept, um, you need to kind of tweak your code with the following. You need to add little zero plus. Uh, and when you ran this, this code, uh, it would not include uh, an intercept. But by default, the LM um, code, the LM function includes that um, intercept. 
So up next, we need to acknowledge where the data is coming from in the LM function. So you'll see that there's a little comma there, and then uh, we put in wage data. So that tells us that uh, it tells the, way, the LM function that uh, after we put in our model, what comes in next, wage.data, is the source of the data we want to run the regression on. So in the terminology of our software, that read.csv function um, up at the top converts the CSV file into a data frame that R can work with. Uh, and then we assign that data frame to, to the object name wage data. Um, and then from there, there's a, so there's a data frame sitting on our com computer's memory. Um, and we've linked that data frame to the name wage data. So now this means that when we run this LM function, um, the LM function is going to go to that data frame wage data, and it's going to look for those four variables, wage, education, experience, and age. It then converts that expression, wage tilde education plus experience plus age, um, into this model uh, and then estimates the regression coefficients for us. If you're watching this video, there's a very good chance that you're in a class and have had to calculate the regression coefficients by hand as an example for once or twice. In fact, you know, if you're watching this video, there's a very good chance you're one of my students, to which I say I'm sorry for you. But uh, R obviously takes care of all of that tedium for you. It does all of the nitty gritty calculation work on your behalf. Um, also note that the LM function lets you do a lot more. Um, if you type in question mark LM or, you know, help LM, um, a web page will open with a lot more details on the LM function. Uh, unfortunately for non-technically minded people, the, the documentation website was written by technically minded people. Um, and I think I'm pretty sure it's written back in the late 90s. So it can be quite difficult to decipher sometimes. But also you often find, um, you know, good points and good examples uh, and, you know, pretty comprehensive documentation of uh, the full function and how it works. Uh, assuming we did everything correct, we could uh, click this and it'll run without error, which it just did. It just jumped to the next line, didn't give an error. So I'm calling this regression lev lev reg, um, standing in for level level regression. Um, once run, we've created uh, a new data frame in R that we've signed the name lev lev reg. Uh, we get our regression. Uh, we can kind of see a summary of it by using the summary uh, function. So by typing in summary there, we get a summary of our regression. So at the top, um, here's the formula that we ran. So wage is the dependent variable as a function of education plus experience plus age, uh, and pulling from the data, wage data. Uh, here are our coefficient estimates. So the intercept, that beta naught is this number, education coefficient estimate is this number, experience is this number, the age regression coefficient estimate is this number. Um, I won't summarize it too much because this looks to be a very insignificant and bad model, but um, you have your um, regression summary there. Uh, if you want to call your ANOVA table, you could type in ANOVA and then lev leverage, like following, and you'll get your ANOVA table. Um, you could also uh, just have your coefficients. So if you do coefficients and lev leverage, you'll have a list of the coefficients here. So here's your intercept education regression coefficient. Um, I think of that beta 1, beta 2, beta 3 from our model. Um, you could also have a vector of your fitted variables. So when I click this, um, what it's going to do is it's going to, for all of those, if, if you recall, there are like uh, 534 observations, right? Um, and so for each observation, it's going to plug in the, the value for education, experience, and age and estimate the um, value for that. So uh, where this might be Y in our uh, model, it's going to give us a value for uh, what's usually y hat in our model. So it's a fitted variable, it's an estimate based on um, the regression coefficients of our model for what that dependent value should be. So if I run fitted variables, it's going to give um, 534 variables out. So just to show you how long it is. So you can see there's 534 um, for each fitted value for each observation. Um, and then resi residual uh, will give a similar um, 534 length vector, and it uh, gives the residuals for each of those observations. So the difference between the actual observation and then the fitted value. So now suppose we wanted to run a model that's slightly more complicated than this. 
you know, this is a pretty straightforward multivariable regression. Uh, these things are just added one next to another for the model. Um, suppose we wanted to have something a little bit more complicated. Um, suppose we wanted to have an interaction effect or a quadratic variable. How would we include that in and to get it to run correctly? So let's suppose we have the following model. Um, here now we have wage um, is a function of our intercept, education, experience, and age all added together, just like our previous model. Now we're going to have this interaction effect. So age times experience. Uh, in terms of interpreting uh, how we would interpret this, I'm not exactly sure the intuition behind this, but let's suppose we wanted this interaction effect. How do we actually um, do it in the model? Well, we need to introduce this little function called i. So uh, I stands for inhibit or as is. It ensures that anything inside the parentheses, you know, I and then parentheses, any, anything inside that is going to be treated as a single column. So um, let's go back to that model we started off with. We would put in this as the code. So we now have wage or dependent variable is explained by education plus experience plus age plus I times education times age. So let's run this real quick and see the result. So we're going to call it lev ledge, lev lev reg two. And so now our regression results are the following. So we have our intercept estimate, we have our beta one estimate, our beta two estimate, beta three estimate, and for our beta 4 estimate, we have the interaction between experience and age. Uh, the big reason why you should use this i and then parentheses um, function when combining multiple variables uh, is the following. It um, will ensure that you run the regression correctly. So take the following example. Um, so we're going to call this level edge reg 3. So you have wage as a function of education plus experience times age. Uh, you would think, you know, just written in kind of our basic math language, that this would be, uh, you know, we'd have our intercept, and then beta 1 would be the effect of education, and then beta 2 would be the effect of the interaction, and then that's it. That's the only variables we ran. However, when we run this regression, we're actually going to find the exact same result as the one we just ran with all four of those um, variables inside. So watch what happens. So running this, we get uh, the following regression, which gives the exact same result as we had just above, up here. So you can see the same intercept values. Um, because R has decided to interpret this, so wage as a function of education plus experience times age, as this model uh, that has the intercept coefficient. Beta 1 is education, beta 2 is experience, beta 3 is age, and then beta 4 is the interaction between the two. So, for example, if we wanted to just have the model wage as a function of education plus the interaction, you know, you need this i in parentheses function, like the following. So, if we wanted to run this model right here, where our beta 2 is just the interaction effect and our beta 1 is just this, we need to be sure to always use that i parentheses kind of feature to make sure that it combines all of that into a single column, because this type of thing might give you a confusing result, the, the result that you didn't quite intend. So when we run this, I'm going to call it reg4. You should hopefully get the correct thing, or the, the, the regression we intended. Yep, and here we have it. So we have our beta 1 coefficient here, our beta, sorry, beta naught coefficient, the intercept here, our beta 1 coefficient, education here, and then the beta 2 coefficient, which is the interaction effect here, as intended. Next, let's suppose that we wanted to do a level of a multivariable regression with a quadratic variable. Let's say for some reason we wanted to, you know, we have our education, experience, and age, but then let's say we wanted to have, uh, you know, experience squared in there as well. So how might we run that? So your first thought might be to run the following. And let's see what happens when we run this. 
So we have wage as a function of education plus experience plus experience squared time plus age from wage data. So it would seem that this would do it correctly, um, but it won't. I'll show you why. Call this level of rich five. What happens is it just runs the following regression, so education, experience, and age. Um, it just completely skips this out, skips out on this. So how do we run the regression? Well, once again, we need to use um, the little as-is feature. So uh, we're going to do the following. I'm going to do level of reg 5 to show you how to do it correctly. So now we have um, education. We have wage is a function of education plus experience. Um, in this next beta, so that's beta 3, I think, we have the column that's, that takes the values for experience and then squares it and creates a single column that's experience squared for each observation plus age. So this should do it if I do that correctly. Yep, and that's it. So you can see our beta naught is our intercept, beta one is our education, beta two is experience, beta three is our experience squared, our quadratic variable, and then uh, beta four is our age variable. Great, so hopefully that was helpful. Uh, once again, I'll post all of those resources into the video description. Um, if you found this helpful, um, if you wouldn't mind putting a thumbs up, and uh, thanks and have a good day, bye.